Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Question 12 states the following. The diagram shows a simply supported beam in static equilibrium. And the question asks us to calculate the vertical reaction force at point B. So it's only actually asking us to calculate one of the support reactions. And it's asking us to calculate the support reaction at the right hand side there. Now it mentions that the beam is in static equilibrium. And so there's two equations for static equilibrium to be true. The first states that the sum of the clockwise moments, or the sum of the moments in the clockwise direction, equals the sum of the moments in the anti-clockwise direction. And the second states that the sum of the forces acting down equals the sum of the forces acting up. Well, in this example, because we're only asked to find one of the support reactions, we're only going to need to apply the first of those two equations. The sum of the moments clockwise equals the sum of the moments anti-clockwise. Now that equation there is true for any point along that beam. But what I'm going to do is take moments about the left hand support. And the reason for that is to eliminate the effect at A when we evaluate the turning moments. And as a result, we can find the force at the right hand support there. So I'm just going to rewrite my statement. I'm going to do the sum of the moments clockwise equals the sum of the moments anti-clockwise. But in brackets, I'm going to specify that I'm taking those moments about point A. Now, when we look at this beam, we actually have two forces acting. We have a force of 45 newtons as a point load, and we have a UDL of 35 newtons for every metre. Well, if we look at that beam, we first of all need to find the total length. And the total length here is just 2 plus 4, which is 6. So our beam is 6 metres long. Now, what we need to do is we need to replace that UDL with an equivalent point load. Now, we've already said that the UDL, the uniform distributed load, is 35 newtons for every metre, or 35 newtons per metre, but we have 6 metres. Therefore, our UDL is equivalent to a point load, which is 35 times 6 in magnitude. That's the size of the force resulting from that UDL. Well, 35 times 6 is 210. And it's 210 newtons. So that's the magnitude of the equivalent point load. But what we need to do now is decide where it's going to be positioned. Well, the weight of an object always acts in the centre. So if we go to the centre of that beam, that's where our 210 newton force is going to act. So we have 210 newtons acting downwards. That's the magnitude of the equivalent point load at a distance 3 metres from the support there. So I'm just going to switch colours just to annotate this diagram further. We have two forces acting and what we are evaluating is the turning moments about the left hand support. So if we imagine pushing a pin through the page at the left hand support and then we can look at which direction each of these forces are going to try and turn this beam. Well the 45 Newton force is going to try to turn the beam clockwise. And the 210 newton force that we've just added there is also trying to turn the beam clockwise. And in fact, the only force that's counteracting that or balancing that turning moment is the force at the right hand support, which will be trying to turn the beam anti-clockwise. So the final thing to remind you is that a turning moment is a force times a distance. So let's look at our clockwise moments first of all. Our clockwise moments, we've got a 45 newton force but we need to multiply that by the distance back to the pivot. And we see here that that distance is two meters. And next we have our point load that replaced the UDL. The magnitude of that force is 210. Its distance back to the pivot is three meters. So that's all of our clockwise turning moments. 
our anti-clockwise turning moments is the force at B, and we call it the reaction at B. But we need to multiply that by the distance back to the pivot, which is 6 metres. So RB times 6, we can write as 6RB. Now let's multiply our left-hand side. We've got 45 times 2 plus 210 times 3, or 90 plus 630 which is 720. All I've done is multiply out my left-hand side there, and that's equal to 6RB. Now, all I need to do to get RB on its own now is divide each side by 6. So what I'll be left with is RB is 720 over 6, which equals 120 newtons. Now, normally, we would use our second condition for static equilibrium, in order to determine the support reaction at A, but the question isn't asking us to do that. So we've completed the question by calculating the vertical reaction force at point B, and it's 120 newtons.